UISR is a government-based research institution. Uh, basically, we have been actually incepted uh, with an objective to give academic trainings, but then uh, gradually we shifted to a research-focused institution. So basically, we have uh, four departments, uh, bio conservation biology, forestry resources, water and climate, and socioeconomics and policy sciences. Since UISR is housed within the Department of Forest and Park Services, and then uh, when the TEEP was idea was coming to Bhutan, and it was the Ministry of Agriculture who approached the UNEP, and then uh, from the Ministry of Agriculture somehow gave the job to the Department of Forest, and the Department of Forest felt that institute is the best uh, place to undertake this TEEP, so that's how we are involved in the TEEP activities. For the Chief Bhutan study, we actually uh, looked at the hydropower and then uh, the whole watershed areas that, that are being deemed to be affected by the hydropower construction and then how management of hydropower will help in the hydropower capacities or enhancing the electricity production by the hydropower companies. So that is, we are actually trying to link between the watershed management and then the energy production, how these two will be linked together and then how these two will actually try to coexist together. So Yes, it is. Uh, actually, the development in itself is a problem because uh, dev uh, developmental activities and then the conservation activities has always been looked as antagonistic. You know, they are not going together. But I think it is now time for people to change the mindset that we should probably look at conservation actually contributes to the development of philosophy because, for instance, hydropower is the perfect ex example. If, if the forest cover is not very good, it will lead to siltation, so many sediments, you know, which ultimately affects the hydropower capacity. That is because much of the investment will go into dam scoring wherein they need to remove the sediment load by shutting down some of the turbines, which, which affects the electricity generation, which ultimately affects the economy of the country. So I think these two has to coexist now and then it's about time that uh, developmental people and then conservation fanatics have to work together now. To We've actually established a very concrete findings that uh, said, you know, the, the, the forestry cover and then the sediment has a very strong linkage. So we have found that if uh, the upstream land use changes are being taken or if the conservation interventions are taken upstream, then that probably would contribute to the reduction in sediment, which would actually help in the hydropower generation. So we are trying to recommend a process wherein the hydropower companies pays to those people who are living upstream so that you know both the hydropower and then the people living upstream live happily. So that is the that will be the crust of the findings from the TEEP run study. Uh, we are looking at uh, actually nine uh, broad ecosystem services but uh, the, the most important one for us is the uh, sediment load that is being affected, the water quality and then the water quantity and then the carbon sequestration and the habitat quality for the animals. So these are the, actually I would say, the four major ecosystem services that we try to focus our studies on. Uh, we actually have come up with some kind of recommendations, but uh, this activity ha has already been existing in Bhutan. But the only problem was monitoring and implementation has been on a weaker side. So we're just trying to strengthen that so that you know the management regimes, watershed management regimes upstreams are more important, it becomes uh, very nice and then uh, somehow we are trying to bring the coexistence between the developmental partners and then those communities who are living upstream. So it is mostly focused, it is not only focused on the biodiversity conservation but as well as for the people's livelihood. So we are trying to link all these three components together. Convincing policymakers has always been a challenge, I would say. I have to accept the fact. But what is so unique about Tip Bhutan study is, since the Tip has come from the top-down, it is a top-down approach. I, would, I won't say top-down approach, but you know, the idea was incepted by the minister himself. So that actually gives us the liberty or an, adv an added advantage point that we have uh, a little bit of confidence that our recommendations will be taken a bit seriously by the policymakers of the country. Definitely it's not going to lie on the shelves of the library. We will definitely be producing a report, but we will also be producing a series of policy briefs. 
So all these policy briefs will be presented to the policy makers. So you know, uh, policy makers generally don't have time to read, go through the bulky reports. So we are definitely narrowing it down to the policy briefs, which will be just one pager. Each recommendations, if possible, we're trying to bring it to one pages so that we keep the crust of why this recommendations is coming. Actually, we create a basis of why this recommendations are from where these recommendations are coming. And then I'm very sure that the process or the findings from the t study will actually find its way through to the policies in the country. The collaboration with the UNEP has been fantastic. We've actually got all the resources that we require from UNEP and then uh, even the technical support has been so phenomenal that we received from the UNEP. But what is very important for, for the small country like ours is T. Bhutanese study actually taught us to live together, to work together as a stakeholder. It actually taught us that how interconnected we are. So for instance the T have involved people from hydropower companies, involved people from watershed companies, involved people from conservation areas. So when these different ideologies come together, you know, it's so amazing feeling. So I think that was the biggest achievement that we had from the team. And then the fact that these stakeholders came together in itself is the biggest achievement that I believe. And then UNEF has done a fantastic job on that. Ecosystem valuation is a holistic approach. And you know, it, it, it is the wholesome, I would say. And then it's very important to look at it at the broader scale, so involve all the stakeholders from all the directions and then just give, bring to one point. Because at the end, you know, we, we are just taking different directions, but we try to reach just one target. So that is why involving the stakeholders, working together, and then uh, together for the benefit of the country, for the benefit of the natural resources, in itself is the biggest achievement. I think it is a very important study uh, TIP in itself is a process and then agriculture would be one Im important thing. It will be very, very interesting because now uh, Bhutan is trying to go fully organic and then it's very important to look at it, you know, how it has been done. Just getting a scenario on the ag organic agriculture and then, you know, in organic agriculture. Another will be tourism, trying to look at the tourism. Another, another will be trying to look at the watersheds of the urban areas. So because urban areas are now increasingly facing water shortage. So all these aspects can be looked at by, I, I think TIP has a very much broader scale or scope to look, look at. Gross national happiness has a component. That is, it has a four pillars. And one of the pillars is environmental conservation. So that environmental conservation takes into account the green accounting process. So that is why we have a separate office called National Statistical Bureau who is now working on the green accounting and then getting in the green indicators. So I think we are gradually trying, to, or we are already ingraining the green accounting processes in the GDP of the country. Mm -hmm.